Hello and welcome to my unboxing and first look at the Space Marines Hammer 4 Bunker. It's right here in this box and it will set you back £35. It's a fair amount of money but it does consist 64 plastic components. Uh, we're going to crack this open now and uh, have a look at those sprues. It's an odd model. Uh, I don't dislike it as much as the uh, Invader ATV, but it's an interesting choice um, for a force that are primarily focused on surgical strikes and being the tip of a spear and deep striking and assault jumping in and being the angels of death, not the turtlers of torment. But anyway, nonetheless, let's uh, rip and tear. Kind of like a large box, I want to say, like a tank box almost. Um, this is the rear. It advertises lots of other things, uh, like the new um, Stormstrike land speeder uh, and the ATV. Uh, you've got also got a um, repulsor in the back and some outriders. Uh, you've got different weapon options. You go for the heavy bolters or the flamers. Why? Why do you put flamers on a bunker? It is a bunker. It says bunker. I think. I think GW got a bit confused. You use flamers against bunkers, not on bunkers. Um, so that's why I'm completely going to ignore that they even exist and just use the heavy bolters. Um, I don't think you get a different loadout for the missiles, which is odd. I would have liked to have seen different types of missiles and also different looking missiles uh, for this price. The legs look strange. From the face of it, it seems like you can raise and lower this. After all, how else do you get into this thing? But I just don't understand why it's got the legs, you know, for support. Why, surely the, the weight of this bunker can keep it down um, when it's firing those missiles. I mean, it's not gonna be moving about at all that much with the heavy bolter firing. You've got space marines that can walk about firing the heavy bolters. Um, so I question why it needs these support legs. It reminds me of the movable cranes that have to deploy these these kind of legs for stability, um, which makes sense if this thing could move about, but it can't. So, yeah, I guess that they were trying to think of things to put on those parts and they just, yeah, thought of that. These fins are a bit misleading as well because it gives you the impression that it can deep strike. It's a, you know, they share the aesthetics there of a uh, drop pod. So again, how does this thing land and how does it um, get to the battlefield? It's, uh, these are all questions that this model is, is uh, giving me. Um, sometimes, you know, models put out qu more questions than answers and uh, this is certainly one of them, uh, much like the ATV. Okay, so you get two sprues. I think they're just duplicate sprues. Um, yes, they are. Uh, my feelings about this were, were correct. Uh, so. Technically, it's one sprue again, £35. Games Workshop have been doing this for a while now, uh, where they just generate one sprue um, for the mould uh, in the factory, and then they can just pump out uh, a number of them, and that recoups the cost, because they only have to make one, and uh, they can bundle two of them in one kit, but still charge uh, the £35, um, which is quite a, a large amount of money. Um, it's not pushed to fit though, however, that's a good thing. Um, but I feel like this kit could be pushed to fit uh, because it doesn't look like there's many, many complicated parts. Uh, that is slightly annoying that that's come bent. The other one isn't, so I'll probably use the other uh, piece. So at least you've got a, an option. You've got, an, a, you've got a winged uh, skull symbol there. You've got the flamers, you've got the bolters, you've, you've got the Aquila, um, you've got these big armor panels, you've got the legs, you've got the targeting array, you've got the missiles, which I'm not a huge, huge fan of those. They, yeah, they don't do anything new for me compared to like the whirlwind missiles. And then, yeah, the, the, I mean, the underside, there's nothing going on, no detail at all on the underside. You've even got something that says front there. That's interesting. You've got the support for the uh, missiles too. You've got the raising mechanisms for the bunker. I'm guessing it can raise and lower. I don't think it says it on the uh, in the rules though. So there you go. It's an odd one. It's just one sprue, but duplicated. 
uh, for, for that money. I mean, it's great that you get a missile launcher now that can fire at pretty much anything on the board. And yeah, it's definitely gonna go well with your army if you go in for like a, a long range force. And it's also positive that GW have released um, this model and say like the servo turret to balance all of the assault focused uh, units such as the blade guard veterans and the assault intercessors and the outriders definitely that, that come with this um, uh, release. It's good that we get a couple of artillery pieces even though they are questionable uh, sort of law wise. Let's have a look at the uh, instruction guide then. So it's one of these that oh, opens like, like so. This is the top part of it and the legs. So you build the legs first, then this, and then they, they all go together. Look, times four. You've got duplicate build processes here. So you've got four there and then they go together with this. And then the panels, which are all exactly the same. I would have liked to have seen some variation, maybe some battle damage, I don't know, something. Um, you can magnetize the flamers and the heavy bolters, uh, just use some small, uh, you know, one by one magnets or two by two magnets will work well. You've got the top uh, array and the missiles, which are ridiculous. The tubes look very long, which is great. As you can see, they cut corners there by putting the missiles, the front of the missiles in the back uh, of the missile tubes as well, rather than create a whole brand new piece and uh, just for the rear missiles. And then you can put the icons on and put it on and there you go. Shouldn't take too long at all really. Uh, quite a straightforward kit to, to put together. You'll have it on the battlefield in no time and um, then you'll be able to fire at pretty much any unit on the board um, on your standard uh, size boards. But it is odd that Space Marines are getting bunkers, especially when these bunkers don't have any way of getting in. Like there's no doors or anything. It's like a tarantula sentry turret, but <laughs> with a lot more armor. It's interesting because the uh, ballistic skill, it says here is four plus. That is the same ballistic skill as a tarantula. Um, the save of a tarantula I think is four plus, whereas this is three plus, so it gets a bit of save. But again, I question this. The servo turret has a save of two plus, this has a three plus, and this is a big fortified bunker. It, it's odd, it really is. Anyway, that is the uh, Space Marines with Hammerfall Bunker. What do you guys think of this? Did we really need this like the servo turret was? Was there a need for anything like this in the Space Marine Army? As I'm covering all of these releases, I'm forming the opinion again and again that Games Workshop are possibly just creating models because they look cool <laughs> and that they will sell because they look cool rather than stick into the, I say, law or um, stick into uh, strategy or tactics of, a, of an army but i'd like to hear your opinions please put them in the in the comments thank you ever so much for joining me today thank you for watching the emperor protects